Hey crew, it's Pitt, and I'm back with another Bible study. Today we're going to pick up pretty much where we left off. Oh, I thought I was going somewhere different. This got thrown at me, so we're going to go with it. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and transition over and we'll get started. I'm trying not to take up too much of your time. I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. Oh, but there is a lot to cover, so we're going to start off. Oh, we finished up with the number 666 and the mark of the beast and that it is 60 or 660 and 6. Specifically, not 666, not 600, 3 score and 6. I, Bob, I'm putting the emphasis on that. Sorry, I got to get my voice adjusted where it needs to be. Um, <clears throat> It's getting a lot better, but it is not there yet. Oh. I'm very specific about that in the order that it is in because it seems to be quite important. There is very good arguments to be made. I will provide the link below, but we're going we're gonna to talk about this real quick. This section right here, this is from the IslamicAntichrist.com. I'm pretty sure this is Joel Richardson's book and uh, his exposition of this. Excellent work. If you look, this is this is what uh, the reason why the Greek number, not the Roman numerals, but the Greek number spelled out, which is what the the original language of John the Revelator would have been, was Greek with maybe some Aramaic and Hebrew in there, but mainly Greek. He was a citizen, but the Greek number is this this. This symbology right here, written out, is 660 and 6. This is the Islamic uh, declaration of faith. It is the name of Allah, and this is how they signify it. And they wear this on their head or on their hand. That's important. You, you will have the name of the beast, the beast, or the number of his name on your hand or on your head. So we're going to work forward from that assumption. It is, it is an assumption, but it is a, an educated assumption. And then we're going to get into Revelation 14. This is all, we're going to pass through this rather quickly, but I, I, I will talk about what we need to. Uh, the Lamb and the 144,000. There's a lot of concern over what the 144,000 is. It is not the Jehovah's Witnesses. That is one thing that we can be fairly certain. That is about the only thing we can be fairly certain of. It says that they will be virgins, they will be male, and uh, they will be from each of the tribes of Israel. Now, there's people that argue that they are one of the lost tribes. I can't argue that. I, there's, argue, there's valid arguments for both for and against whichever one you happen to subscribe to. Um, there are arguments on both sides. <clears throat> I'm not here for that. Uh, they sing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures. These are the, the four living creatures are the ones who broke bring out the implements that the angels use. They bring out the seals. They bring out the bowls. They bring out the trumpets. That, that is who the four living creatures are. Uh, they're described previously. We're not going to get into that. They're the one, the, the 144,000 were the ones who had never been defiled with women, for they are virgins. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. They have been redeemed from among men as first fruits, and no lie was found in their mouth. That is no man that I have ever met. Does not, I mean, you, you might be able to make an argument for the virgin, but no man that I have ever met can say that they have never spoken a lie. You are not in the 144,000. That is reserved by God. He has them people picked out. It is not by any works that you do. And that's where I'm going to leave that. This is the important part that I wanted to get to. The three angels and Babylon's fall, and the mystery Babylon. That, that's the main focus of what this is today. 
Then I saw another angel flying overhead with the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe, tongue and people. We have had these four descriptions before, that is skin colors, nationalities, languages, and tribes, uh, sub like, uh, not nations, but like the, the states would be the nation and the, the tribe, and your locality would be your tribe, like, the, like literal tribes. Um, and then he said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship the one who made the heavens and earth. Emphasis placed by me. And, there, and the sea and the springs of waters. Worship the one, Yahweh, he who is, who creator of all, the sustainer of all, he who has breathed the life. No prophet, no man, God. And then a second angel followed saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, who has made all the nations drink the wine, of the passion of her immorality. There's a lot to unpack in that statement. We're going to deal mainly with who Babylon is and not with the wine of the passion and all that. There are arguments to be made for actual wine and oil and the various sins that the United States is responsible for pushing out through our entertainment. Uh, we have dealt extensively with that on this channel, so we're not going to get into it. Like I'm... I am, the music I review, or not review, the music that I react to and I talk about is the trying to push the opposite of this. This is the, the exact opposite of what this channel is about. Okay. And then the third angel followed, calling in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives the mark on his forehead or on its hand, he too will drink the wine of God's anger, or undiluted into the cup of his wrath. He will be tormented in fire and sulfur in the presence of holy angels and the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. Day and night, there is no rest for those who worship the beast and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. This is important. We've talked already about how I feel that the tracking system has to do with the, the mark of the beast. I do. I believe it is going to be tied into the Islamic world somehow. I don't know how. But somehow, the mark of this prophet's word is going to, uh, going to be involved. Uh, the Antichrist will be a Muslim. He will be a Mohammedan. He will be Muhammad, son of Muhammad. Like Muhammad bin al Muhammad is the name of the guy they're looking for. Oh. The Mahdi and the, the Antichrist are the same. Know that. Fallen is Babylon the Great. Okay, now, here is a call for the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This is where your life is going to get hard is because and the reason why I'm doing this is due to current events like I prefer to not speak on the different doctrines of man. I try to speak on my God and what he has instructed me to speak on. The current events are concerning particularly dealing with the fall of Babylon. This is not referring to actual Babylon, which, for reference, is, let me see, get it where y'all can see it. This is the area of Babylon, right here, specifically south of Baghdad. Uh, if you were unaware, Saddam Hussein, when he was there, was rebuilding Babylon. He was rebuilding statues and buildings, and Babylon of old was being re rebuilt. A lot of that went down with the rise of ISIS and Daesh. Oh. And I heard a voice from heaven telling me to write, Blessed are the dead, those who die in the Lord from this moment on. Now remember, this is directly following the seals. This is the end of the seals. 
the beginning of the bowls or prior to the trumpets. This is speaking of the martyr of the saints. This is the ones who follow the way. This is the ones who will not succumb to the spirit of the Antichrist. That is specifically who he is talking to right here. This is not the raptured church. This, there is no raptured church. If by some measure of grace, you do survive through the trials that are coming, it is going to be extremely difficult and we are going to get into that right now. Um, but know that there is no get out of tribulation free call. It will be difficult or you will die. It is less difficult to die. If you give away your life, you live it. And that is truth. And I looked and saw a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man, with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. This is symbology, <clears throat> but I believe that we will see in the literal sky, a sign. I, I do. I believe that. I believe that it is the approaching planet, the inter, inter, uh, inter solar system, like it's going to enter our solar system from outside of our solar system, and it's going to disrupt things. It is going to cause the Wormwood incident. It's, there, there are valid scientific reasons to believe that this, this is proven. Like, this is Proving God's word. God spoke it. It is true. This is proving that. <clears throat> um, then another angel came out of the temple, crying out in a loud voice to the one seated in the cloud, Swing your sickle and reap, because the time has come to harvest, for the crop of the earth is ripe. He is coming for the harvest of the saints, and he's getting the tares at the same time. Uh, then another angel came out of the temple, and he too had a star, a sharp signal. And another angel, with authority over the fire, came from the altar and called out to the Lord, and ca called out in a loud voice to the angel with the sharp sickle, Swing your sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of grapes from the vine of the earth, because the grapes are ripe. Let's see. And so the angel swung his sickle over the earth and gathered the grapes of the earth and threw them into the great wine press. The wine press was trodden outside of the city, and the blood that flowed from it rose as high as the bridles of the horses for a distance of 1,600 stadia. But that is approximately 184 miles, which is a very long distance. That is saying that the, the blood will be that high. That, I believe in a literal translation. Uh, in, I know I'm going to catch some heed for me because I don't believe in the divinity of Jesus, but I do believe in the prophecy there. And I'm okay with that. The Song of Moses and the Lamb. And then I saw another great and marvelous sign in the heavens, seven angels with the seven final plagues, which the wrath of God has completed. And I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, beside which stood those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name that has conquered the Mohammedans, the, the beast, the image, and the number of its name, or is talking about the idolatry there. They were holding harps from God, and they sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. I'm not going to bother you with my singing. You can read it. If you need to pause it, go ahead. Um, the preparation for the judgment, I looked in the temple, the temple, the tabernacle of the testimony was opened in heaven. You could see the sky rolls back. And out of the temple came the seven angels and seven plagues. I believe that the seven angels are going to be seven planet, like not planets, but asteroid-like events. And like the heavenly messengers will pass by, and they will carry the plagues. Uh, then one of the living creatures gave them seven bowls full of wrath. And this is where the bowls of wrath come in. This is after the seals. And the harvest of the saints. Now, if you have seen the signs and you have run to the wilderness, you are preserved out of that. But you are still here. 
Sorry. Uh, I know there was a jump cut there. I normally don't do that. Uh, the first six bowls of wrath. And then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go, pour out on the earth the seven bowls of God's wrath. Uh, we have been preserved, saved, from the wrath. Uh, that is written. This is where the wrath begins. This is after the seals and after the harvest of the saints. Most of the saints have died at this point. So the first angel went out and poured his bowl on the earth, and loathsome malignant sores broke out on those who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. Now, this is where science meets religion. This tracking system then is going to be implemented because the things are not safe enough is going to cause some issues, right? Due to the difference in the atmosphere, the sky has been rolled back. There's about to be a significant change in the planet and things are happening extrasolary, like outside of the planet and with the sun. And they're like, if you're in the wilderness, then you're not affected by these things and you haven't taken the mark, so you're not affected by that thing. But if you have, this is what you have to look forward to. This is the thing that I am trying to warn you against. Once you have taken the mark of the beast, there is no turning back. You do not get to repent of it. You don't. If anybody's telling you that there will be tribulation saints who have taken the mark and repent of it, they are wrong. Like you can try. I wish you all the luck in the world. But the wrath is reserved for you. Okay. And the second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it turned to blood like that of the, de of the dead, and every living thing in the sea died. The blood like that of the dead is not flowing. It is coagulated. It is chunky. The blood of the dead sits there. It gets funky, and you are not to consume it. That is written. So it is not flowing blood. It is not pouring fresh blood like from a cut. It is blood that is sitting. And the third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and springs of water, and they turned to blood, and the angel of the water said, Now, it does not say like blood like that of the dead. These might be flowing blood, like it might be fresher blood. I don't know. It doesn't specifically say. The other one says that it is funky, coagulated but, and I heard the angels of the water say, Righteous are you, O Holy One, who is and was, because you have brought these judgments, for they have spilled the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar reply, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. And then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun. I'm looking at you for a reason. Hope you have checked out Suspicious Observers and their disaster playlist. I hope you have. Because I'm not getting into that. They explained it better than I could, but it ties into this. Suspicious Observers. They're on YouTube. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and was given the power to scorch the people with fire. And the people were scorched by intense heat and they cursed the name of God who had authority over these plagues. Yet they did not repent and give him glory. And the fifth thing, they're calling out, you know, the carbon is going to be really bad at this point. Right? It's going to be really bad carbon. And the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And the kingdom was plunged into darkness. And the men began to gnaw their tongues in anguish. And the curse of God of heaven, and cursed the God of heaven for their pains and sores, and yet they did not repent their deeds. The throne of the beast can be taken as the Middle East, where we just looked at here, this whole area right here, is the throne of the beast. Now, the, the whore of Babylon deals probably with us. There's an argument to be made for Rome, and a very good one. 
I'm not led completely on that. I'm going to give both arguments. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. And men began to gnaw, gnaw their tongues in anguish. Now, I think this is everywhere. Simply because what is going to happen is that we are not going to be protected from the sun by the Earth's magnetic shield. Like, it's not going to protect us as, for a while. Uh, when, this, when the Earth does its change and we get affected and sun blasts because of the extrasolar incursion, the sun will blast. It's going to knock away our, our magnetic screen and the sky will roll back. We will not have an atmosphere for a while. And when I say atmosphere, I'm not talking about the air. I'm talking about the, the visual. Like, you won't be able to see the blue in the sky. You will not be able to see the stars above. You will not be able to see because we will not have the, the, the atmosphere that we're used to. I don't think that it's going to take away all of the oxygen. All of the, the oxygen and nitrogen. And all of the things that make up our planet, our atmosphere. It's going to be the visual thing. I want to, that's, that's how I see it. There is an argument to be made that it will take away everything, but I don't see that here, so I'm not subscribing to that. And the sixth angel poured out its bowl on the great river Euphrates, and the water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the east. Now this is talking specifically Rome, about here. Remember I told you we're about... Uh, where Babylon was, right? Right here. here we go. Babylon is right here. This is the Tigris River. And this is the Euphrates. I don't know if you're going to be able to read it. I get close and it disappears. But this is the Euphrates River. This is Babylon. This is where he was rebuilding Babylon. So this is the river that is going to be dried to prepare the way for the kingdoms of the east. This is why I had the map up. I'm going to go back to where the lines are. This is where the river is. It is preparing the way for the kings of the east. Here's the king of the east. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten kings here. These are all... And this, you can make the argument for the, the north, but this guy controls these people. This is the head of the, the Shia. I think it's the Shia. And then, then Saudi and Iran have been Sunni. This is about to change. This is not so much. Not, not that I see, but this, this is going to be unified. They're going to be unified in their attack here. In this little strip just east of Jordan, which, depending on where you're at and who you see, right, they do list it on Israel. Some places do not does not list it as Israel. This entire area used to be Israel. This is the area that they are talking about dividing. And we're going to go back here. All right. So the sixth angel pours out his bowl on the river of Euphrates, and it dries up, and it prepares the way for the kings of the east. And then this, this struck me today. This is interesting. And I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs coming from the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. These are the demonic spirits that form, perform signs and go out to all of the kings of the earth to assemble them for battle on the great, great day of the God of the Almighty. And it struck me because how they are described. This, this right here, this looked like frogs. There's a conspiracy theory that talks about the reptilians. I've never placed a whole lot of stock in them. Just haven't. All people are people, right? But today, I saw something in the Bible that made me think then maybe, just possibly, I might be wrong about some things. I'm always open to that. God is constantly telling me that. 
So there's that. These are the demonic spirits that perform signs and go out to all the kings of the earth to assemble them for battle on the great day of the God Almighty. The great day of God, the Almighty. That's important to me to emphasize. Behold, I am coming like a thief. No one knows the day or the hour. You do know the season. We've talked about that. Blessed is the one who remains awake and clothed so that you're not robbed in the middle of the night. We've talked about that. And so he will not go naked and let his shame be exposed. We are called to be vigilant in the season. We are in the season. We are called to be vigilant right now. Be vigilant. Be aware of these events that are happening. We are saved from the seventh bowl of wrath. This is where the remnant will be pulled away. Oh. And by pulled away, I mean you might it might just be death. This is the reforming of the earth. The seventh bowl of wrath is when the earth actually turns. That is what this is. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came into the came from the throne of the temple saying, It is done. And there were flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder and a great earthquake, the likes of which had not occurred since men were upon the earth. The last time was before our recorded history, before the Bible. But it is trackable. We can show it with signs. And so mighty was the great quake. The great city was split into three parts. And the cities of the nations collapsed. And God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. And then every island fled and no, no mountain could be found. The entirety of the globe is going to shift. It will change. It will be different. And great hailstones weighing almost 100 pounds each rain down upon them from above. That is massive. Water is eight pounds per gallon. 100 pounds of water is what? That's 12? 12 gallons? Frozen, so it expands. You're looking at large, like very large hailstones. Like the size of a, a small car hood. That's, that's big, right? And then uh, the men cursed God for the hail because it was so horrendous. The woman on the beast. All right, here's where we get to where I feel like the United States might be involved in some prophecy. At the time of this prophecy, there was no United States. It was an unknown continent, except for the people who were living here already. And then one of the seven angels with the seven bowls came and said to me, Come and I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. And the kings of the earth were immoral with her, and those who dwell on the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her immorality. There are two very good arguments to be made here. One is that it is the Roman Catholic Church. That is a very good argument, but I believe that the Roman Catholic Church is the false prophet. I believe that the Roman Catholic Church is going to lead into idolatry, but the United States that has led into immorality. Despite all of their flaws and their absolute opposite of Christianity, the Roman Catholic Church was largely moral. Now, they sold morality like the money changers in the temple, and should be chased out with a whip. But they were very good at keeping the moral order, keeping people in line. That is not the wine of her immorality. The wine of her immorality is basically everything that we do as a culture in this country. That didn't always, that wasn't always the way, but it is now. It is absolutely now. Can I turn on the radio without hearing about a pharmacist? And I'm including <clears throat> all of the prescription drugs, as well as the non-prescription drugs, as well as alcohol in that pharmacy. 
things serve a purpose, and those purposes can be very helpful. Antibiotics are a great thing. Xanax is the bane of our existence. Opioids are the bane of our existence. Alcohol, alcohol can be great. Opioids can be great. If they've allowed us to do surgeries and to help people and to heal people, and that is a good thing. But they destroy your soul with constant use. They, they make you into a different person. Someone who obeys idols. And we, as a country, have been responsible for that going back out all over the world. What we portray in our media is horrifying. That's why we do what we do on this channel. Sorry. And the angel carried me away in the spirit and into the wilderness. This is a vision. This is not being physically carried away, but in the spirit is my mind was carried away. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast and was covered with blasphemous names and seven horns, seven heads and ten horns. She was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. This is the strongest part of the argument for the Catholic Church. Uh, seven heads and ten horns, the woman dressed in purple and scarlet. There are good arguments to be made for that. Very good arguments. I think that might that's the beast is the, the, the church, the false prophet, and the beast are tied. Well, the woman, though, rides the beast. The woman is on top of the beast in charge of the beast. And well, we've got more than seven heads coming off of the blasphemous names, right? I mean, there is but one God, the Lord God Almighty Himself. Any other name is a blasphemy unto him. Any other name. When they asked Jesus how to pray, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He did not say, In Jesus' name we pray. Ever. And she held in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. Again, this leads me away from the Catholic Church and into where we are as a nation. Not that there is not sexual immorality in the church. God knows there is. A lot of little boys know there is. But it is not the overarching. The overarching is the, the thing. The overarching for us and everything that we put out is. And on her forehead, a mysterious name was written. This is something like not a proper name. But it is Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, and the abominations of the earth. In this country, we fight for child sacrifice. We fight for immorality. We fight for deviancy. We fight for greed. We fight for lust. We fight for envy. We fight for all of the wrong things in this country. All of them. Everything that has been considered a sin, we are advocating. We are Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes, and the abomination of the earth. More, uh, the leading cause of death in this country is abortion. It kills more than heart disease and cancer. Think about that. How many children are we sacrificing on the altar of Baal? And I could see that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and witnesses for Jesus. I was utterly amazed at the sight of her. And this is where people are going to call hypocrisy on me because I don't believe in the divinity of Jesus. I believe in the power of God himself. And so Jesus came and said, you don't need an intermediary. And everybody said, oh, you're the intermediary. And he was like, all right, I guess it's needed, but it was never necessary. But if you stand for Jesus, you are by, by all means going to heaven. He used that. Because it was needed, he used that. There are going to be some people that call upon the name of Allah, call upon the name of Buddha, they call upon the name of whoever, that are genuinely turned to God and have given their life and service to him. They're going to make it. Where some of y'all that are out here and said a sinner's prayer and never changed your ways will not. Bet.
when you do that, when you make the stand to not get the mark, because that is what is going to happen. That is that is what's going to happen. They're going to kill you. And that will be the blood of the saints and the witnesses. That is what that is. This is this telling you yet again that you will die for your belief. Know that. Like, don't go into this blindly. Go into it knowing the sacrifice. Like, to give your life for the service of God is the greatest blessing of all. Your soul existed before it was in this flesh. Your soul will exist when this flesh is withered away. This entire book tells you that. So, make sure you pay attention to that. Know that this is not the end. This, everything around us, like if this entire world goes away, and it will, this entirety goes away, and you stand with God, then you're good. The millennial reign is coming. Okay? And it says, why are you so amazed? Said the angel. I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast you saw, it was and now is no more, but is about to come out of the abyss and go to its destruction. And those who dwell on the earth, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will marvel when they see the beast that was and is not and yet to be. This is the system rising. This is where we are in history. Then, it was not. It was, and it is now no more when this was written, but is about to come out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The beast is the church in its entirety. The body was the Roman Catholic Church. The heads are the various denominations that sprung thereof. And the crowns upon the heads are the different um, sections of those. You have first, second, and third Baptist and like, Pentecostals. Like, there's a there's a whole spectrum of churches. Seven of them. Seven, 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 seven. All right now. <clears throat> This calls for a mind with wisdom. That means, I want you to think about this. Let's see that. Okay, that's higher. Than... Well, I've been doing it wrong the whole time, guys. Sorry. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains upon which the woman sits. The seven mountains of faith. The, the seven churches that are founded. We're going to get into the churches. That will probably be the next. The seven churches that sit upon the foundation of the, the original. They are the different heads. They are the different mountains. There are seven. Then there are seven kings. This is separate from the seven mountains. Five have fallen. One is, and the other is not yet to come. But when he does come, he must remain for only a little while. There's a good argument to be made that the king here is referring to the Pope. Oh. And that the one that is currently there is this one. There is another prophecy, uh, a couple of them actually, that tie back into that, but we're not going to get into that today. The beast that was, and now is not, is an eighth king. He is the one that will come after the shortly. And that is right here. That is the prophet, the false prophet. Oh. The one who belongs to the other seven and is going into destruction. The ten horns you saw, well, saw are the ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but will receive one hour of authority as kings, along with the beast. These kings have one purpose, to yield the power and authority of the beast. The beast system is this tracking that is coming. You will be required to go along. It's going to happen. I feel strongly that it will be tied to Islam, Islamicism, but I'm willing to admit that I could be wrong. It could be purely secular. We don't know. We won't know until the mark is actually upon us and we are being forced to make the choice. We will be forced to make that choice. Know that. We're going to do that. But the victory of the Lamb will come. Oh, they will make war against the Lamb and He will triumph over them. 
because he is the Lord of the Lord, the King of Kings, and he will be accompanied by his called and chosen and faithful ones. And then the angel said to me, the waters you saw where the prostitute was seated were peoples and multitudes of nations and tongues. We are the melting pot. We are the peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Give me your huddled masses. And the ten horns and the beast you saw will hate the prostitute. They will leave her desolate and naked, and they will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by uniting to give the kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. Now, here comes the, the purely speculative part on that. We're having an influx right now as a nation, it's this nation, which I believe is Babylon. There are a lot of very recent refugees making their way here right now. These people are the ones mostly of fighting age and male and have been trained as warriors by the last 20 years by these last administrations. The one last administration, the very last one before this one, tried to put an end to that in two different fronts and kind of stood in the gap. We've talked about that, about him standing in the gap. But the gap is empty now. There is no one in the gap. And they are coming here now by the plane loop. They are trained, they are of age, and they are healthy. And instead of fighting for their country that is being taken over by some people that have something that looks remarkably like the mark of the beast, They took over that country and they left and they're coming here instead of fighting, despite the fact that they outnumbered greatly those people. I started to talk today about a small army that overcome. I got led in a different direction when we're talking about this, because this is happening right now. Understand that. The, the, the sacrifice and the seal is about to open. They're coming in great numbers. It will be door to door. When you start to see these things, like they're going to start in the major cities. They're not going to start out where I'm at. People shoot back here. They're bringing a great number to these major cities. And most of these major cities made it illegal for you to defend yourself. Now, I'm not even telling you to defend yourself. I've made it clear. What your two choices are, you are to either die or to run. I'm going to try to run. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to try to make it to the wilderness, as I am called to do. But if not, if I am caught, then I will die singing my praises of my God. I know where I'm going. I am firmly cemented in that. I think that God is going to preserve me for another purpose. I feel that. I may wind up losing everything that I love. I understand that. It may be bad, really, really bad. And I'm not trying to be downer. I'm not trying to, to disappoint or to bring anybody down. I am just trying to make you aware that despite the badness coming, the promise that on the backside of that is better. Remember that his plan is his plan is my plan. My plan is whatever his plan is. It is that is where I want to be. All things work together for the glory of those who love it. I'm bad with remembering things. But you know where I was going with it. We're going to wrap this up with Revelation 18. I saw another angel descending from heaven with great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his glory. I believe that the angels that are shown are heavenly bodies. And 
asteroids, meteors, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> I believe that we will physically see them in the sky. I do not believe that they are ethereal bodies. I believe that it is something we will physically see. And this one descends from heaven with great authority. And the earth was illuminated by his glory. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. He has become a lair for demons, haunt for every unclean spirit, and every unclean bird, and every undetestable and every detestable beast. All the nations have drunk the wine in the passion of her immorality. The kings of the earth were immoral with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown wealthy from the extravagance of her luxury. If you do not see that that is us, you are blind. I could be wrong. Like, I don't want to be prideful in this, but this is clear to me, like as clear as just reading it. And I heard a voice from heaven say, come out of our, my people, so that you will not share in her sins or contract any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. This is why I run, because I am called to run. Come out of her. I'm praying daily that if God wants me to physically come out of the, out of here and to go elsewhere, he will provide the means and show me because that's what I require. Not to make demands of God, but to, he, he's okay with us wanting proof. <laughs> Ask Gideon, which is where we almost went. Get back to her as she has done to others. Pay back her, pay her back double for what she has done. Makes her a double portion in her own cup. Where have we been for the last 20 years? What have we done the last 20 years? What do they think we have done? That is what is coming in double. This is what they're just saying. This is plain as day. This is what is coming. And as much as she has glorified herself and lived in luxury, give her the same measure. Grief. In her heart, she says, I sit as a queen. I am not a widow and will never see grief. And therefore, her plagues will come in one day. Death and grief and famine. And she will be consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. I do think that this is where the, the solar strike will be, is going to be right here dead on us. I think it will be centered around New York, but it is going to affect a large, large section of this country. You can probably see it on a map. And if I would have thought about it, I'd have pulled it up. There's a map floating around about where the immunizations are. I shouldn't have said that word, but it, it might slip past. Wherever this has happened, there's a, it's, it shows, and it's, it's kind of blue. And it kind of looks like a strike, like it's blue, and then there's a streak that goes off up by the lakes. There's a streak that comes off this way a little way, and a streak that goes down the east coast a little ways. And it kind of looks like maybe, maybe a strike was there. I'm just saying. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be prideful with it. And the lament over Babylon was, then the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail at the sight of the smoke rising from the fire that consumes her. In fear of her torment, they will stand at a distance and cry out, Woe, woe to the great city. The mighty city of Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. I believe that Babylon is, the Babylonian Empire is America, and that the city of Babylon, the specific one that is talked about right here, is New York. If you are there, you might not want to be. Get out of her, quickly. If you are a believer, you should be gone already. You should have seen this coming already. And I'm not even talking about this. I'm talking about this last year and a half. If you haven't seen what's coming for you, I'm praying for you. And that is literal. I really am part of my prayer every day. 
and the merchants of the earth will weep over her because no one is left to buy their cargo. I'm not going to read the rest of this. This is the destruction and the doom of Babylon. This is us. I, my goal was to show you that this was us. This is, this is what is coming. Finish this out and read it. Like My voice is not going to make it. We might pick it up, though. Oh, but this is the lament of Babylon. And the lament of Babylon and the doom of Babylon is rough. This is where we're going to wrap it up. Please take my words to heart. Please understand that these people that are coming right now and these people that have been coming for a little while have not our best interest in our free place. And that is not to say that we can avoid it, but to be aware, it will be a single day. It will probably be around a holy day. There are several feasts upcoming. The spring feast have been fulfilled. The fall feast have not. The next is trumpets. And that falls here in a couple of weeks in September. The beginning of September. I think it's like the 7th or the 8th. Look it up. It's, it's close. The feast of trumpets. And it would be fitting. I'm not saying it will be. There's also a time coming almost at the end of the, the fall and into the spring restarting where Esther, there was a, a situation there that we talked about. And that is coming, that would be March. Those are dead days I'm looking at. Like this one that's coming close, I'm looking at that very close. Because the situation is, is unfolding elsewhere that is driving this to happen soon. And that's where we're going to leave it. But to the crew, thanks for hanging out. I hope that you have gotten something useful out of this. I have hope that I have not misled anyone. That is my fervent prayer. I only want to expose what God has given me. I want to show as much as I am able the love and grace of the Lord God himself. He never asked for an intermediary. He never asked for a sacrifice. The only thing that has ever been required is you. He wants your soul. He wants who you are. He wants you to turn to him. And if you are unclear on how to do that, do this. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you a sinner, and I ask you to remove that from me. I freely accept your grace and will. Over my life, I ask you to change me into the man that you wish me to be or woman. And I ask that you guide my steps in all of your ways. I ask this in your holy name, in your holy name. Amen. If you do that, then you are his. He will come into your life and change you if you allow. He will turn you from your ways and make way. He makes straight your ways. He will show you the narrow path. He will guide you beside still waters. Every promise in the book is for you whoever you are. All that is needed is for you to turn your life to him. Most people are going to dismiss this. Many will call me a heretic. Okay with that, I know where I am with God. I serve the God who created this planet. I serve the God who wrote this book. This book has been altered? Absolutely. It is not inerrant. Absolutely. And if you're putting your faith in the book itself and not the message of the book, then you are committing idolatry. The message is God. The book is the tool used to help. The law was written for man, and man was not made for the law. These are all truths. I'm praying for you every day. This has been Penn State. Peace.